We've got a pretty bizarre story for you now, though it's an interesting one. Not least of all, because it tells you a lot about a Home Secretary with a keen nose for headlines. To tell you the story, I'm going to have to use a word that you probably haven't heard in a long time, and it's one that may make many people queasy. They'll find it genuinely offensive, including myself. So be warned. That word is gollywog, but we think it's important to use it, and I'm going to leave it to Ash to explain why. The story begins at the White Hart Inn in Greys, Essex. Bennis Riley runs the pub where she displayed her collection of around 30 gollywogs in February. A member of the public complained to Essex Police about the collection, saying they'd found it distressing. And last week, officers from Essex Police entered the pub and seized the dolls, treating that complaint as an allegation of a hate crime. You can see them here bagging up the racist caricatures. No arrests were made, though Essex Police have said an investigation is ongoing. It wasn't the first time the authorities had tried to get rid of those dolls. In 2018, the local council asked her to take them down, but the landlord there refused and claims to receive even more of the dolls from supporters afterwards. Riley told The Independent this. My husband and I are not racist at all. We do Indian weddings. We have many cultures come into our pub and none of them would ever say we're rude to them or anything like that. We welcome them all. To me, we are all people and my husband feels the same as the gollies. They're dolls. So far, so local. But now enter Home Secretary Suella Breverman. Sky News spoke to a home or office source about the story and they said this. The Home Secretary's views have now been made very plain to Essex Police, so they're under no illusions. Police forces should not be getting involved in this kind of nonsense. It's about tackling antisocial behaviour, stopping violence against women and girls, attending burglaries and catching criminals, not seizing dolls. Braverman has been clear about how she wants the police to handle hate of various kinds, saying this just last month. I've been deeply concerned about reports of the police wrongly getting involved in lawful debate in this country. We have been clear that in recording so-called non-crime hate incidents, officers must always have freedom of expression at the forefront of their minds. That intervention generated a lot of favourable headlines for Braveman from the Tory press. There was this in the Daily Mail. Sola Bravman blasts police force for sending five officers to seize collection of gollywog dolls from Family Pub, as Home Office source warns they, quote, shouldn't be involved in this nonsense. Then there was this in the Telegraph. If you want a swift police response, call them to arrest a toy. That's from Petronella Wyatt. But did the Home Secretary actually ever get involved in the case? Or was this just a canny move to increase the wedge effect of her war on, quote, Wokery pokery. This is what Essex Police had to say. We're investigating an allegation of hate crime in Greys. The report was made to us on 24th of February and we visited a venue off Argent Street on 4th of April. We're aware of reports suggesting we have been contacted on this by the Home Secretary. This is not true. In the meantime, pub landlady Benice Riley has put her remaining gollywogs back on display. Her husband, Christopher, is due to be interviewed by the police when he returns from holiday next month. But Adam Biankov, political editor of Byline Times, he's done a little digging into Riley's Facebook history. And he found this. This is, as you can see, Riley's social media. And you can see a highlighted quote here. They used to hang them in Mississippi years ago. There was also this. Let's see how many post this. Posted Lawrence Ashenden in 2020. It was reposted by Christopher Riley. White Lives Matter. And Riley posted this too. Sadiq's New Ideas. And it's a gollywog on a plinth. I'm going to say why I think it's so important to say the entirety of this horrible word, gollywog, and not just shorten it to golly or gollies. And I'll tell you this by telling you a story. I used to work in a pub. Uh, Aaron used to come by there frequently. And I remember one day, this must have been about 2015, 2016, the landlady brought in a gollywog tea set. And she said that she wanted to serve tea to the customers from this gollywog tea set. And I obviously objected to it. I said, this is a racist caricature of black people. And the word gollywog has been used to denigrate black and Asian people in this country for decades. And she looked at me with this mixture of pity and disgust. And she said, uh, Ash, we don't actually use the term gollywog anymore. We call them gollies. 
So she wanted to serve tea in this gollywog tea set. And when I pointed out that it was racist and said, this is a gollywog, she was like, no, 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 you're actually the one being racist here. It's a golly. Now, that's why I think it's so important to say the entirety of this disgusting word. And I think it is different from something like the N word, because gollywog has been shortened to golly or gollies in order to allow people to participate in the delusion that these are cute children's toys and not a deeply racist uh, emblem of aggression. And they are an emblem of aggression. And I consider gollywogs to be part of the makeup of psychological terrorism that helps sustain white supremacy. Now, this was especially the case when gollywogs were widely used in advertising, because you're talking about a period of time where images of black and Asian people were images that were made to look ugly or disgusting or crudely comical. So you had adverts like the Pear Soap advert, where it depicted a black child being washed and then emerging white in order to create these connotations between dark skin and dirt. And the purpose of gollywog dolls was to hammer home this point of, you are grotesque, you are ugly, you are not as worthy of respect or dignity as white people. And this was all taking place in a context where you did not see positive images of black and Asian people, and in particular, positive images of black and Asian children. And so that's why in the 1960s, the 70s and the 80s, you had so many black and Asian activists campaigning against gollywogs and also campaigning for more positive imagery of black and Asian children in children's books, for having that representation, which you'd see on shows like uh, Sesame Street or um, you know, this wonderful era of children's books, uh, which had been uh, sold at the Walter Rodney bookshop by the Bogle Louverture Publishing House. This was all about having a kind of countervailing tendency to that kind of psychological warfare, which was socializing black and Asian children to believe that they were ugly and they were disgusting. So these are emblems of what I believe to be psychological terrorism. And you can see that in the way in which this man, this pub landlord and his wife displayed them. That up in the pub, they're being hanged from shelves. And from his posts on Facebook, it's pretty clear that there's a bit of nudge, nudge, wink, wink going on, where it's sort of intended to resemble a lynching, but being done so in this kind of plausibly deniable way. They're not gollywogs, they're just gollies. They're cute. They remind us of our childhood. And what's disgusting about this story. What's most disgusting about it is that this should just be a local news story about one local racist. But what the Home Secretary has done by wading into the row and saying this is a waste of police time, by contextualizing it as free speech and open debate, is that it then gives cover and credence to a form of racism that a decade ago 15 years ago, would have just been dismissed as BNP thuggery. And that is something which I think is relatively new in our politics. I do think that things have gotten worse if you've got a home secretary defending the display of gollywogs. Whereas I actually think that 10 years ago, even a Tory home secretary would have found it quite easy to condemn that. And the fact it's a woman of color providing that kind of political cover, it signals a kind of um, veneer of respectability being given to a form of racism, which as a country we collectively agreed was something we all wanted to move past. It signals a deeply backward step. I know it's not necessarily as big a story as something like junior doctor strike or the hostile environment. We're talking about this one horrifically racist pub landlord, but this is a horrifically racist pub landlord who's just been given a bit of a carte blanche by the Home Secretary.
That's worrying. That should frighten us all. 